defense things. Just maybe some insights as well that may not necessarily pertain to a play on the floor, but maybe a situation. I might pose a question during the video. Um, just to, something to think about, not as a this happened and this happened or this is right or this is wrong, but more of a, hey, if this happened, what would you do kind of situation. So have a great game. third, maybe third game in a row or whatever. I know the legs are tired. They're kind of shot, especially being running on these rubber floors. Okay. Lance, you can see this play on video. I don't know how the camera angle is going to show. You appeared that you wanted to call a foul. Your arm went up like you're going to call a foul. And then you passed on it. I think you probably could have had a whistle there. It looked from the outside looking at it. He had his, his hands kind of came down on him. But that's okay. I know, like I said, again, I understand the legs are tired and stuff, but um, just think about this, Lance. When the shot goes up, the last thing we want to do is back up. Fresh legs, tired legs, either way, if the shot goes up, we don't want to be backing away from that rebound action. We want to be in position to make a call on the rebound so that gets us closer. Rotations, our core coverage is right. Tony, good. I don't remember, Tony, we talked earlier about opening up to the play, not necessarily having to back out all the time. Just again, keep that in mind. Chuck, you've got a really good body position when you're on the floor. Looking at plays, you're opening your shoulders up. Um, you're showing what your partner's where you're looking at. So this play here, we just had a travel. Absolutely, definitely a travel. Something to consider though. Uh, so just tell us where you want the ball. Like, what side we're going to. It's something small, but it helps separate just that confidence. Like, nope, baseline over here and point so that your new trail can see where it's supposed to be. Staying with the shooter up and down. I can tell as, you're, as the official where you were looking, which is good. Helps your partners know what you are looking at as well. I like it. You know, we're definitely calling the hand checks, the arm bars. That's what we want. It's what the WIA wants. It's what the National Federation wants. So let's let's stay consistent now. So we got a couple of them, we gotta make sure we're consistent with this. Okay, 
Now, Chuck's had two of them. You know, the question I'm going to ask is, is anybody else seeing any of those? And if not, you know, can we come together and say, hey, what are we seeing on here? You know, Chuck, you've got a couple of these. Can you come to your partners and be like, hey, are you guys seeing this? Or do I have to adjust or ask them to adjust so, it, it, so that we're consistent as a crew? And then sometimes it just doesn't happen in front of other people, so that's part of the game, but at least be able to recognize that. Triple whistle. Now let's let's think let's think cadence here of who should have what whistle and when and how and who. Drive from the trail into the leads primary, foul at the rim. Needs to be, I think in this play, lead, trail, center. Now I'm not sure if we had that in our order, but we had a triple whistle, which we really don't want to have a triple whistle on that play. We really like this to be one whistle on that play if we can help it. Now, center official might be the second best, the, the second best whistle, depending on where and when. Good. All three of you recognized it. I know Chucky made the foul call. It's weird. It's screwy here because of where it is. That's good. You know, you didn't see the, su the substitute come in. Lance hit the whistle. So, I mean, we got it. It was perfect. Well done. I really do. That tells me one, you're looking, you're expanding your vision, which is good. You're outside of your primary and you're picking up a secondary matchup, which is good. My question I have is not for Chuck. My question is for our center officially on that play, which I think Lance, I think that was you. you know, what did you see and why didn't you see that in your primary? So you know, depending on your partners and your pregame and what you talk about, you might not come and get that holding foul. You might trust that, well, my center official on that play is deeming that that's nothing, so I have to trust, I'm trusting their judgment. That depends on your crew, what you're doing. All right, Tony, on that one, um, the three-pointer shot went up. You were the lead on the opposite of the shot, and as it went up and it was near, you went across the lane, you, you did a rotation. So, two things with that. Number one, you're not in a position to do any rebounding coverage. That's number one. Number two, you put your trail official in a bad spot. You put your trail in a bad spot to officiate because you're forcing him or her, depending on what you're working, to move back or to move up. It just We don't want to be moving on the shot. It's hard to officiate. You could have stopped as the lead and then backed out. Remember, even if you're all the way up to the other side, you can still return where you came from because rotation isn't done until you get there.
good call. <clears throat> you'll see when your mechanic is here, the hand check. I guess my, I guess my question would be is if it was the hand check, if we watch this play on, on film, and we're giving him free throws, my question would be, was the hand check out for, far enough away where he took one or two more dribbles and then went up? Could we have gotten it earlier? Or could we have said it was more of a push rather than the hand check because he was, in the, he was, he was beat and had the layup? Something just to think about and look at on the film. I'm not sure. double whistle, but I think in that situation, if we really want to get really technical, probably the center official should make that call versus the trail. Both are going to blow the air in the whistle. Totally get it. But if we look at where that foul occurred, uh, we would say that's more of, I think that's more of a center official call because of where the contact occurred. Now, there's something to consider and think about. speaking in high school because we were still in that shot process and there wasn't like a change of possession the control change so we were clearly going to be I think technically speaking we should be switching I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent sure I, I'm not personally but I think mechanically speaking by the book we should be table side and switched Take a break, Greg. Good. You guys are in the right position. You're working the system right. Be mindful, Tony, on these plays of what's happening in the paint.
this, this, this situation right here. And this is be the whole crew. There's something we can learn from. Now, we have a sideline violation. So the player stepped out of bounds. We want to communicate with our partners for two very simple things. Number one, where are we putting the ball in play? He stepped out in the front court, carried on into the back court. We want to communicate that with our crew. Front court, back court, wherever. That also dictates if we have a rotation now. Because of where he stepped out of bounds, you might not be going, you might not be going anywhere. You might be staying put and forcing everybody else to go. So just, just think about that if you're the center official and it's out of bounds on your sideline. It looked like a, a holding foul cutting across as they were cutting across the paint in the middle. I'm not sure. I, I, I got screened out from my side, angle looking at it. Um, just take a look at it again on film. The coaches aren't exactly overly impressed with that one, but I like that we're off ball. Like we're looking, we're looking for things off ball. That means we're 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 expanding our vision. You know, that's a sign of a crew that's not a bunch of that's not a bunch of ball watchers. shooting that's good. Remember to only try to use two hands. It's new high school mechanic for this year. We were trying to get that two hands up. All right, good call on the airborne shooter. He's still in the act of shooting. Up and down. And then I've learned it at camps is the airborne shooter, it you know we always think like oh he's gotta get buried to the floor or it's gotta be major contact. You know, something that they preach they preach to us at, at the next at the higher the next level up above high school basketball and college basketball, it, it doesn't take a lot to impact a shooter. You know, the slightest brush, the slightest bump, it really it can matter. So, you know, we want to definitely protect our shooters up and down to the floor. So great job doing that, guys. started with a nothing and then he came through and just basically ran him over that's a very good call now the question is what are we doing we're in the bonus are we in the bonus are we not in the bonus <coughs> where are we taking the ball Minute 15 to go for a half. 
Seven, six fouls, 2017, good game. You guys are consistent. I mean, uh, the one comment I get would say, you know, is are we all getting hands and things like that, so. Okay. Just a little goof on the rotation there, getting in position, but here's what I liked about it. You got where you were supposed to be. It happens in the NBA, it happens in, in, in the men's division one, it happens in the women's division one, I mean, it, it happens. We get ourselves in positions, things that come up, our feet, we get straight line or moved and we don't see something and we end up with two leads for a moment and now we get back right out of it. You know, and you guys were seamless in your movement back, which is good, which is very good.
some on elbows, swinging, things like that. There's contact, extensive use. Was he fouled in the situation as he got the rebound? Things like that.